I am an off-track hiker in Australia that uses ropes and tapes to get to remote areas like this to access magnificent waterfalls from below and from above. And sometimes the risk outweigh the rewards as I dislocated my right shoulder and as I clung to the cliff face, my companions tied a rope around my waist and hauled me up to the tops. And I spent three weeks in a sling during the month of February, which gave me five weeks to the start of my planned five consecutive Caminos beginning St Jean Pierre de Port on April 1st. I had done my ninth Camino last August in 40 degree heat and I wanted to do these Caminos in spring to see the complete contrast of colours. It all begins with a dream and dreams are made to be fulfilled. I was born in Spain and my family migrated to Australia in 1962 when I was nine years old. My family returned to Spain and I visit Spain yearly to see my mum who is 94 and my sister who lives outside of Madrid. We are now traveling south to Ethica province of Seville, where I was born, to spend a few days for Easter celebration. There is a cold front that is affecting the whole Iberian Peninsula, and the rain turns to hail and then gives way to snow. There are reports of lots of snow falling in the Pyrenees, where in only a few days I will begin my walk from St. Jean Pied de Port. Ethica, the city of churches, or it's commonly known in Spain as La Sartén, the frying pan, for its extreme heat, looks quite the opposite with dark clouds moving in. And its main square looks deserted as Easter parade celebrations are put on hold. We visit this church that my grandfather, when he was alive, used to carry the Cristo de Confalon and paraded it along the city streets during Easter celebrations. So back in Madrid, where the weather seems more favourable and the Easter parades have gone ahead. Back in my hotel room near Paseo del Prado and just opposite a brightly illuminated Atocha train station. All packed and ready to go to catch my train to Pamplona where I will overnight then catch the midday bus to San Jean Pied de Port. These next two days will be the most difficult for me as I will have to carry my 40 litre pack on my left shoulder as my recently dislocated right shoulder has not recovered fast enough and I will be only able to carry a 2 kilo day pack and have my larger pack sent by courier on a daily basis. On the train I meet a fellow pilgrim 
a Turkish American named Ahmed. It will be his first Camino and when he arrives in Pamplona he will head off to the airport to pick up his wife and go to St. Jean Pied de Port. You checked out this castle? Oh. Wow. Pamplona's Plaza del Castillo is a large square and where I have lunch with two Brazilians that I met when I exited the train in Pamplona's railway station. Marcio and Peter, it was their first Camino and they asked me for directions to the city centre to have something to eat before heading off to St. Jean Pied de Port. I find it surreal that I'm back in St. Jean Pieu de Port so soon. It was only last August when I was here to do my 8th and 9th Camino at age 70. And here I am, last day of March, ready to start my 10th Camino, aged 71. And according to my plans, there is an 11th, 12th, and 13th Camino. All the four cardinal entries into Santiago. Camino Frances from the east, Finisterre Muxia from the west, Camino Inglés from Ferrol, the north, and Camino Invierno from Ponferrada that joins the Camino Sanabres from the south, forming a perfect cross. What an adventure. Only minor problem is that since my accident at end of January, I only have the complete use of my left arm and that I succumb to a shooting pain in my right shoulder blade every 50 minutes. That forces me to stop, rest and compose myself before beginning again and not knowing what lasting damage I might do to the shoulder by continuing on. Because they check, in Santiago they check only from here to here. They are not interested in that. It's impossible to control all of this. It's impossible. One step a day minimum. Sarria to Santiago, two. Okay. Although I am starting on April 1st, which is officially the first day that the Napoleon route is open. The Pilgrim's Office advises us that the Napoleon route unfortunately is closed as the recent rains that fell as snow in the Pyrenees has rendered the pass dangerous. The only option is the Valcarius route. Some stages along the highway that I had come down this morning on the bus. It had been raining very hard. Some 30 mils of rain had fallen and the miserable weather showed in the faces of the pilgrims who walked that stage this morning. However, 
weather has improved and there is plenty of blue skies for tomorrow's first day.